about polishing up a rock using um, electric pan power tools uh, it's the way I usually do it there are a lot of people who are very skilled in this field that all I can talk about is what I know anyway my limited uh, skills we're gonna polish this piece of lapis lazuli. What I do first is have a look at it. Just play around with it. Have a look at the surfaces. Uh, this person who's getting this stone simply said to, to polish it. So I've got a bit of freedom. What I do is have a look at the surfaces so probably put a polish on here flatten off this surface and put a polish on here there's some nice sparkles here in the calcite part of the lapis of uh, some pyrite so probably leave that as a feature and then simply probably Polish up that surface and across there. Maybe leave that end edge to show the natural rock, and and it also highlights that the where you're coming from the polished surface off onto the on, onto the natural rough surface. And maybe polish down that surface where them uh, pyrite bands are. And so across there, down there, up there and there. Okay, we'll start. Well, I'm going to state the obvious and say this is an angle grinder. A um, four inch or a hundred millimeter angle grinder. Now for taking the very aggressive um, rough surface ops. We use this four inch or 100 millimeter concrete grinder disc used by tilers and stone workers. But in this case with the lapis today, I don't think I'm gonna need this. There's no, I don't have to be extreme and remove a lot. I'm gonna to jump to the second stage, which is also a tilers and stone workers tool, a uh, PVA wheel, we call them here in Australia. It's uh, like a plastic material that contains uh, grits of um, abrasive, abrasive grits throughout. It, it comes in various sizes. This grits is, is the most aggressive one, 36 grit. They're usually squared off there, but this is very worn down. I'm uh, stingy and make the most of my um, investments. All right, we'll try this. Halfway through, and as always, your, your plans will change as you start to grind away at the rock. I sort of kept my idea there on that side of doing the, that face and then this, these faces, but decided to leave the natural crack 
in there to, to keep the, the, the uh, uh, shape of the original rock. It's just something I do. Leaving that rough edge as I planned and the rough edges there. And on the other side, a bit of a change because of this low spot here. I'm having to round. The original plan was a surface there and a, a surface there and there, but that's changed into a rounded surface because of because of this uh, low spot, this hole here, which I'm going to have to grind right out. But still, it should be all right. It should turn out good. Oh well, onwards. So now we're finished with the 100 millimeter PVA wheel used by tilers and stone workers. Got the basic shape of the rock. Have a, I've left the divots in there. It's just taking away far too much material and, and, and losing shape. Better to leave that as a sort of a natural feature now than lose too, too much of the shape of the nice shape of the rock. So we have that on one side, the little crack and the three surfaces on the other side, and the natural edges. The owner of the rock can display it in several ways. I think I'd be displaying it like that this natural pyrite showing in the natural edge and the, and the three surfaces to look to catch the reflection the, the polished surfaces but it can be displayed that way not too bad either or even not sure if it stands on its edge but in a in a stand it can be stood sideways where you can display both sides a bit of a crooked video shot there so we'll move on to the next stage, which are the uh, wet diamond discs. The next stage involves a, it's like an angle, angle grinder, but they call them a sander because it's a variable speed. If I can find the wheel, yeah, here. Have your various speeds on it. An angle, an, uh, a genuine angle grinder is too fast at about 11,000 revs. This is uh, toned down to probably about 1,500 revs on setting three, but we have various settings there. Now these wet diamond discs are colour coded and they're diamond particles in a plastic material. You might just pick up the reflection on the video of the diamond particles. This set cost me about $35 and it comes with a the set and comes with a velcro attachment that screws onto your you can juggle the video screws onto your sander make sure you get the right thread size for your sander that screws on there and the discs adhere to the velcro now your rock needs to be dipped in water every now and again the water should have a bit of detergent in it just a little bit rock is dipped in that and then ground with the discs for a short period and then dipped again. Simple. Just work your way through the various grits starting at a rough grit of about 50 or 100. I started at uh, this one is 100. Just see it. 200, 400 etc etc right up to 5000 grit and you should have a nice finish. 
by adding a bit of detergent to your water, you're sort of you're, you're wetting the rock so that the wet diamond discs can work. But at the same time, you're adding a slight lubrication between the between the diamond particles and and the surface of the rock. It's just a, like a a nice balanced abrasive action. Each of the grits is probably worked on on each flat surface for I don't know a period of about a minute or two. It doesn't take much, and then you move you you change the grit onto the next grit, and another couple minutes onto onto each each of the flat surfaces while dipping it all the time. Consideration, I won't start the sander up because it's too noisy to talk then. But the consideration is to, as you're polishing the each surface, is just to do a slight round off on the edges. Just not too much. Keep try and keep this definition of the edge. But it just adds to the nice polish look afterwards I've found. Just go around as you as as you finish one flat surface. Just do a few strokes like that on the edge. Well, we finished the last grit of the wet diamond discs. It's just a matter of drying it off from the from your water now and uh, seeing how you went. This uh, the last grit. Is I can't remember what it is five or ten thousand, but it's a very fine grit, and it puts this. If the video will catch it, puts this high shine on the on your surfaces. Now, if you don't have a lot of gear and you just want to start with the items I've showed you, this this is enough. It's almost a mirror finish, but I do take it a step further. I put it onto a a. Um, a buff wheel, a metal cutting buff called a a stitch sisal buff. They're pretty cheap to buy in the hardware shops. Yeah, this is my bench grinder mounted on a the stand. They're not that expensive to buy either. And uh, this is the wheel I use. I think they cost eighteen or twenty dollars to buy when they're new. And about, I think it's twelve dollars for this uh, extension that screws onto your bench grinder and allows you to um, spin these um, sisal wheels on and off. There's quick change onto a thread there. Now you might have heard me say it's a metal cutting buff for cutting back metal. And that might sound too aggressive to you, but for hard stone and rock, this acts like a polishing buff. It's just a matter of using a, a economical to buy item for the job. So that's the finished job. What we end up with is, with a bit of thought, we end up with a display specimen that shows the natural state the rough edges and they and were able to highlight the inside grains by polishing certain edges and you can see what I was saying about slightly rounding off the edges just sort of thro throws the light on the reflections you still have the 
the, the sharp, almost sharp edge. But just do your, just rounding off in every direction. That's only a gentle action. So, I don't think we've changed the shape of the rock that much from what it originally was. We've flattened it. Flattened it and rounded it here and there, but basically the stone is still the same shape as it was. And, and as I said, keep saying, leaving the rough edges um, helps you keep that shape. Well, that's it. That's the finished product. Well, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully, I might have inspired you enough to have a go at this. It's fairly simple and it's not that hard. You'll go wrong at the beginning I did. You'll leave scratches in your first few attempts, but you'll get better at it. Eventually you'll start really start to enjoy it.